I mean, how do I count all the mom fails, And really? <laughs> Welcome to Mom Hive, a new show where dynamic working women discuss motherhood openly and honestly. No sugarcoating, no bullshit, and no pretending that our kids aren't somewhere watching TV right now so we can record this without interruption. I'm Angelica Temple, creative human, entrepreneur, and mama to two adventurous little earth mermaids, Anoki and Indira. Today, I'm joined by the incredible Joy Cho, graphic designer, blogger, author, entrepreneur, and the founder and creative director of Oh Joy, a lifestyle brand known for bringing joy to the everyday. On top of that, she's raising two amazing daughters, Ruby and Coco. Please welcome Joy. How are you? How is this life? I mean, what kind of question is that after this past I don't know. year? I huh? never even know how to ask. <laughs> I'm I'm okay. I'm hanging in there. My kids are in camp. Yes, thank goodness. I mean, that's amazing. You forget how much you need your kids to be away from you for you to love them more until they are with you all the time for a year. 100%. I feel like space is good for every member of the family. Yes. <laughs> I feel like that's one of the things that is the hardest actually when you got when we all got used to being together all the time taking space even when you don't have to, right? So if you have your day, you know, your meetings get canceled or something, a shoot changes and you're like, oh, I guess I could do a family day. You don't have to. It's actually really nice to keep <laughs> routine going and take that time for yourself. Absolutely. I totally agree. So Joy, you seem to have mastered the balancing act of work and motherhood, which of course we know is an illusion. So what is your most recent mom fail? Uh, okay, well, first of all, the word balance to me is completely a myth. It's really about the juggle. It's like you have multiple balls in the air, you know, your kids, your partner, your work, your friends, blah, blah, blah. And you're just trying to do your best not to have any of them fall. And sometimes one falls and it's fine. Yep. Whereas balance implies perfection, which we know we are not capable of. Um, I mean, how do I count all the mom fails and really? <laughs> because I'll give you an example from not super recently, but like previously where I did like a tooth fairy um, letter and I signed it joy. Oh my gosh. That's I signed it with my own name, not the tooth fairy. So that was great. Um, and honestly, in general, I think this past year has challenged me a lot. I mean, these are more sort of emotional mom fair fails where you're just trying to figure things out, but I've certainly like lost my temper a lot. I've certainly like spoken in ways that I look back and I was like, I should not have said that or use that tone or things are sort of part of evolving as a parent, but because we were so tested, I had so many of those. I really feel like all of 2020 was like a giant mom fail on my part. But at the same time, I'm trying to give myself the grace to know that it was like that for everybody. I totally agree. I feel like I, encountered an internal rage that I didn't know I had <laughs> and felt like I accessed it way more regularly. You know, like my sort of fed up to here spectrum was like always right here. <laughs> yeah. And I think there were a lot of, and it sort of, you know, it ebbs and flows. I feel like there were months where it was just like, what is going on? Like everything's against me and I'm escalating. So I feel like when I was thinking about my most recent mom fail, I think it's that I, I've started escalating to the threat too quickly. Mm -hmm. Like the, if you do the, if you don't do this, you don't get that thing, which yeah. fine. We're all going to do it sometimes. Like sometimes you have to do it to motivate. It's okay. Like there's, you're never not going to do it. But sometimes because I know it works, I'll like just go right there. And I got it thrown back at me so hard the other day. And I was <laughs> like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, and I just heard my voice played back to me. <laughs> That has oh for gosh. sure happened with us too, where our ki my kids have like said stuff like that back and you're just like, uh, I'll try to circle back and be like, you know, the reason I said that the way I did is because I'm feeling really bummed and feeling bummed is making me frustrated. And when I'm frustrated, you know, and I do this whole cycle. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about your work. So I started Ojoy, let's see. This year will be 16 years ago, which is crazy. I started my career as a graphic designer. And so the short version of the long story is that I started as a design business. 
uh, grew and evolved due to social media. The blog being the very first uh, form of social media and then evolving eventually to other forms. And because of that, I've been able to expand beyond my roots, which was as a graphic designer. Now I do creative content for social media. I do design collaborations with a ton of different brands. Um, and then I've written six books. I do some, uh, it's called the Ojoy Academy, where I mentor and teach up and coming business owners. And so pretty much it's evolved from being able to bring all these different things into my world that I love, that I'm passionate about. And it didn't start like that. I did lots of jobs I didn't want to do. I did lots of lots of clients that weren't my favorite back in the day because that's what you have to do when you're growing your business. Um, but I've been able to evolve it over time to really sort of package it up into a bunch of creative endeavors that I really love. So rewinding a little bit further, what do you feel like was the hardest part of going from a working person to a working parent? I was an M, very type A. I'm just like one of those driven people. I've always been like that. If I have a goal, I go after it. And I like have a very clear defined way of approaching it and making it happen. And then you bring a, a small baby into that and all of a sudden, this these paths or these goals or these steps so that you need to go and do certain things doesn't apply to a baby. I thought like, oh yeah, the baby's just gonna sleep over here while I work. And everyone thinks that, and it's not. I totally agree. I remember when we came home from the hospital with Anoki, you know, within that, we were home without visitors for the first two weeks was sort of our rule. Like both our parents could be there in the hospital and then they had to go back to the East Coast and then come mm -hmm. back again, you know, on their little shift. And it was so funny because my husband, he sent an email to the parents or to all the people that were going to visit and just said, okay, I've spent two weeks at home with Ange and the baby. And here is how you can be helpful. And like, just gave a list of things. It was like, don't take the baby out of her arms as soon as she's done breastfeeding. Like, don't mm -hmm. assume that, you know, all these different things, you know, make sure the sink is empty. She's never going to ask you for help. So here are the things that should be on your list every single day, you know, that you check in about. And it was so funny because it was the first time we had to do that, right? And sort of, and it was helpful because we talked about it with each other. And we keep, we always come back to that actually, whenever we have a reset, right? Like ages and needs change dramatically. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden someone's in mom mode. So we realize, okay, Dave should actually be doing more pickups and drop-offs for the next month, just so that it's not always me you know, even yeah. if I happen to have more flexibility at the time. And I think those conversations just keep going. In a similar way, I was, it was a lot. It was very intense. I had a very hard time asking for help. And until I I really started understanding that help was key to being, being able to manage everything I wanted to do. My, I was sad, I was depressed, I was upset, I was crying every day. And until I had this really good conversation with my husband one day, where I was just like crying after he came home from work. And I was like, I don't know how to do this all. Like I have a full-time job. I have this, I have, I have to do this. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, why do you think you have to do this alone? He's like, what do you think I'm here for? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I feel like, you know, you need, you expect me to do this and this and this. And he's like, did I ever say that? Did I ever say those things? And he's like, if I wanted a domestic wife, I would have married someone else. <laughs> and, <laughs> because it's clearly, it's just like, there are certain things I'm good at and certain things I'm not. And I think I expected, oh, I need to cook five nights a week. I need to have, but yeah. I'm, I was also a, work, a full time working person. And until we had that very real conversation about the things that he actually is very capable of doing, but I was not communicating and, and he had no idea I was feeling that way. And I think that's the thing is that women typically put this on themselves. We put the weight of doing it all on ourselves. Um, tell us about your most chaotic or funniest mom moment. Chaotic was for sure this past year. I think it was just one of those things where I was like on a, I was on like a podcast interview, not unsimilar to this, where I had to be professional and I had to, you know, try to present my best self, but I couldn't, I didn't have childcare because my kids were home and I, you know, I had to just do it while my kids were, and they were literally just like around here, having snacks, 
asking me for things. And luckily they didn't have to see me. It was just voice for this one. So I was walking around the kitchen, doing this, doing this, doing this. And it was one yep. where there was two of us on it. So I wasn't always talking the whole time. So I would sort of zone out for a second because she wasn't asking me a question. And I would be like, da, 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 da. and then all of a sudden I'd be like, oh my God. Like she just was talking to me. I have no idea what she just asked me. So it was very <laughs> much not my normal self, but it is what it is. So we were both judges on Craftopia. And yes. when I first had my like inner, my casting interview to be a judge, mm -hmm. I scheduled it when I thought my kid, my Indira, the youngest would be napping. I was like, this will be great. It'll be fine. But she wasn't. And so it, but I, had, I was alone in the house. So I set up the camera and I had her below me and I just breastfed the whole time. But at one point in the middle of the interview, I had to switch boobs. So you just see this little head come <laughs> up and then go back down. <laughs> and I it love it. Just like, you know, I mean, just that full chaos. And I had like full makeup, but then was like basically topless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my daughters, I'm just gonna give you their ages. So my daughter Anoki is four and change. She's She calls herself four and a half. Um, and then the younger one will be two in two weeks, uh, Indira. And four is so fun. I feel like I'm in an unlock. Like she is this little earth spirit. She's so into living creatures and she's so caring and like really cuts me a lot of slack and is just like this buddy. I mean, she's got her moments, you know, she still has like a little toddler in there. And then the almost two year old Indira is in like Rage Fest USA. It is crazy. And I don't remember it being like this with the first one. And I know they have different temperaments and, and different styles, but like she runs so hot so like the joy is high and so is the anger mm -hmm. and like she turns purple in the face and it's like oh my god like there's nothing i can do so tell me a little bit more about the ages that you're in because you're a few years ahead of me but with kind of a similar gap yeah so my oldest is nine and a half i have two girls also nine and a half and then my youngest is six and a half so they're three years apart both girls I, looking back at that time, like two to three is complete chaos. It's like yeah. terrible twos, three major. Three was the worst age for us, for both of our kids, especially our oldest one, because we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. Um, That's how I felt with Anoki. Yeah. Yeah. And then from four to like seven ish, I think is pretty magical because they're just kind of like what you were saying. They're coming into their own selves. They can speak, they can express themselves. They're, you know, starting to read and then they get to be reading. And they're just like these capable humans who can do more stuff. They can help you out. Yeah. And then, I mean, my nine-year-old, she's not quite a tween yet, but nine and third grade with girls, especially I hear is definitely a transitionary year. It's like, you're not quite getting, you know, hormones and stuff, but you're figuring stuff out. You have more questions. You're challenging different things. You're questioning friendships. You're changing friendships. It was very emotional for us. So I'm kind of expecting the next few years to be a little tricky for the older one. Yeah. And then I'm just like kind of bottle up the little one for her last little bit before she gets there. But yeah and it's and that's also i'm very fascinated with birth order too like i really my husband doesn't believe in it as much as i do but i really think there's certain personality traits that come out of birth order and my kids completely mm -hmm. fall into that um, me too i think it's just a thing you know it's like the older one's always more sensitive a little more emotional they're they're responsible you know they're just more in touch with their feelings and the little one is just like ah! Explosion, they, just explosion. full explosion, dynamite. They're usually like, <laughs> they don't care what anyone thinks. And in, in some ways it makes them more confident. They're usually louder. Yeah. They talk so loud, um, probably because they are just <laughs> always fighting for attention. They're usually yeah. funnier too. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to know that that's just the thing. And then just sort of like adjust for each kid as they, as they need it. Yeah, I always think it's funny when we, you know, if we hang out with another family, no matter the ages, the olders hang out and the youngers hang out. Yeah. So like, even if the younger is older than my older, right? <laughs> yeah. They like go into these little pairings and it's so interesting. So tell me about your mom hive. What community gets you through all of it? I mean, 
As a business owner and a parent, I really feel like those are two groups of people that you need resources, you need a community. And whether that's your real life mm -hmm. friends, online friends, your friends who are your real life friends, but they live far away, whatever it is, I think yeah. that it's so important to have people that you can turn to, that you can text, call, cry, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever, um, because it's hard. I mean, you will you go through all these stages that nobody prepares you for, and you really can't be prepared. Like books are great when you're going through things, but no book is gonna ever outline your exact situation. I feel like I, I vented less with my first kid, mm. probably because there was also, I don't know, there was like more magic to it. I don't think it was less, I think it was less hard, actually. I'll just mm -hmm. say it. It was, mm -hmm. it was more mysterious, but it was less difficult. And I think that with, when I just started to like let my guard down with mom friends and just fellow moms, like anyone, like any parent, like it's the great equalizer. You know, yeah. I just need to like not be alone in this moment. But I do, I think it's so helpful because you know, like they might just be like, yeah, it totally sucks. Like you don't necessarily want some, they'll say you'll get through it, but you don't want them to be like, no, like so and so is so great. You have great kids. I'm like, I don't want that. I want mm -hmm. that sometimes. Tell me that when they're being awesome and when we're hanging out. But like, I also want you to be like, yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. What's the greatest gift or help another mom has offered you? I think it's just like offering to take your kids. Honestly. Yes. Yeah, we, um, so we had a pod, we have a pod. We still have a pod, right? <laughs> Through all of this, um, where we shared some after school care so we could have longer work days. Yeah. Um, but we also did day dates. So mm. we would take, everyone has two kids that are the same ages that are in, all four babies are in daycare together and all four big kids are in preschool together. So it's like Amazing. very, so it's very produced. Yes. Um, and, and so we'll do day dates where like every other month, you know, like two couples get day dates and two of the other families sort of take the kids. And it's been amazing. It's like, I mean, sure we can get a babysitter, but there's something different because the kids are also getting a play date. So they're yeah. also stoked. Yeah, you know? that's great. All right, Joy, let's do a round of rapid fire questions. Let's do it. Weirdest place you've pumped? West Elm store in New York City. I was on a book tour, had to pump because I was away from my daughter. And then what happened was I packed it up because I was actually flying. I had ice packs, all this stuff. And then it leaked all over the floor oh, of the West yeah. Elm. And thank goodness they like, I knew them because I was there with an event, but like lost it all on the floor of West Hill. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Like I once pumped on an, in, on an airplane in my airplane seat, like next to strangers. Like I wasn't next to Dave. I was just like, and I literally, I like put a scarf and then I put the scarf in the tray table, like from my shoulder and just like, and it was like a night flight. I just slowly like <laughs> trying to be so quiet. Um, okay. What's a negotiating tactic that you learned from your toddler? Well, snacks, always. Snacks always, you get your way if you offer snacks or you say yep. you barter with snacks. I know some people say don't do that, but hey, I use it. Oh yeah, no, I'm definitely like a snack motivator. Um, what's your best go-to distraction when you need your kid to sit still for an hour? I mean, you know what I'm gonna say, even though we're not supposed to say is the iPad. I'll tell yeah. you though, people ask me a lot like how much screen time do you let your kids have and blah 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 because they you know my kids are pretty uh, creative and artsy and they do lots of projects but sometimes if you just need a quick thing and you just need something it's totally fine for me not for everybody some yep. people are very limited about it but there's educational stuff there's craft videos my oldest watches a lot of mm -hmm. craft videos so it's not all bad but it's also okay you know? We're still like a little young for iPad. Mm -hmm. Like I'm down. I keep thinking, <laughs> keep joking. We don't really use them in the house. It's mostly a car thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, we got to train the two-year-old. We got to get her on this <laughs> because car rides with the four-year-old are a joy. Yeah. She watches like Tumbleweaf and Creative Galaxy, laughs out loud, is having like a party in the back seat and we're able to talk, which is yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Where's your favorite place to hide for a moment of peace and quiet? Um, my bedroom or the bathroom. I mean, I'll yep. say so many times I have to go to the bathroom, but I don't actually have to go. Or if I do, it'll take me 30 seconds. And then I just stay up there because sometimes yeah. I'm just like, I need to be by myself. What's the time you were creeped out by your child? Well, 
almost every day. I mean, my my kids right now are so <laughs> funny, and they also do because they are they watch some YouTube. They pick up on these random things that I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm. So the other day they were making fun of Dora because Dora is such like a little kid thing, and and so they were like, we did it, we did it, we did it, and then it said. We hid the body, and I was like, <laughs> "Body? <laughs> what? <laughs> like so morbid? Like sometimes those will come up, and I'm like, oh, I'm like where did you hear that story? Like is that is that something that came up in a book? Like, mm -hmm. And I like try to gently like find the source because I'm like, what is? That? I remember one point she was like, oh yeah, their family's messed up. I was like, what? <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, what is going on? But when I saw, when I was thinking about being creeped out, we go camping with our kids a lot. And the other, a couple weeks ago, we were camping and I was next to Anoki, but I woke up and she was holding, just holding my face, looking at me and saying, are you sleeping well, mama? <sighs> and I was like, this is really sweet. And like, you're gonna murder me. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's the best advice you've received as a mom? I don't know who said it, but I, I repeat it a lot to other moms, is that in that moment of mom guilt that we all have, mm -hmm. no matter, yes. despite our best, you know, logical part of our brain, at the end of the day, you go home, you're with your family, everyone still loves you exactly the same yeah they don't actually yeah. know the difference they don't actually care they don't actually feel what you're feeling they all love you exactly the same and like that's one thing i try to remember in those moments because it doesn't change how the most important people in your life feel about you it's just you putting that on yourself Amazing. We are going to end on that note. Joy, thank you so much for joining me and taking the time. It's also just really nice to catch up. And I just loved, I loved everything you shared. And I think that we were all like stronger and better at this together. And I really appreciate you. Thank you. So good to see you. Tune in to the next Mom Hive for more conversations on motherhood and even more reassurance that you're not the only one whose kid made them cry this week. See you next time.